This is Wakefield Community Television. Hello, and welcome to the Show Me Show. I'm Kent Wonder, and as always, my co-host, Kent. I gave my dog herpes, and I'm not sorry. Okay, thank you, Kent. And as always, our show is brought to you by the good people at Rocket Tampon. Today on our show, we're going to talk about finding God in everyday things. Where is God? Now that is a question as old as time itself. That is if you believe in God. I believe that the universe is a giant geranium in the hand of dark matter. Now is a good time for a brief station identification. Okay, we're back. We are going to start our show discussing where God is and is not. Kent, please open the suitcase. And now it's time for your daily music lesson. Oh, hello there. I am Frederico Guitaro Magnifico. Welcome to Guitar Tip of the Day. But first, I must introduce my kitties. This is Sausage. This is Milanese. This is Contessa Junior and Frederico Junior. Now, most important thing about your guitar, you must know your guitar. Your guitar is say like your brother or your your sister or, or say like your mother or your father or your best friend or that cousin who comes to visit or that uncle that's kind of creepy at sometimes. You know, it's it's this friend. It's 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 the friend you haven't seen in a long time. It's the friend that you must always keep close to, you, but also keep far away. At the same time, the guitar is always, always going to be there for you, whether you want it to be or not. That is the true magnificence of the guitar. The guitar is wonderful. I love it.
Now, Frederico is very important, but as I was saying, the guitar is most important to you. That's before you learn how to play any instrument, anything at all. The guitar is part of you. It is your relationship, it is yourself, it is your relatives, it is your family, it is your friend. And that, my friend, is the Frederico Guitar Magnifico Deep of the Day. Thank you. And now it's time for a commercial break. It's time again for Mel's big sale blowout of ham and audio products. Everything has got to go. We're smashing prices. Slashing. Smashing. Destroying. Stomping. Ripping. Tearing. Cutting. 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 And cutting prices. That's Mel's. Audio and ham blowout. We even got ham. Some more ham. And even some more hams. Come on down. Get a discount. Supplies will not last. Go. Open 9 to 5. That's 147 Main Street. Wakefield. And now we welcome our special musical guests, the Wizards of Sound. Stay frosty. And now we have a special treat for you. World-renowned economist, Milton Eaton. An economist that explains time and money. shopping tips and things you can purchase for any holiday. And welcome back to the show. We're selling some crazy items today and they're selling like hotcakes. One example is this wonderful new and improved tampon spoon. This little item can be yours for only $99.99. <laughs> That's crazy you say. That's amazing you say. God what is wrong with you you say. Now, if you order in the next 10 minutes for the tampon spoon, we'll throw in this le next little vial in for free. That's right, this little vial right here, the essence of Cthulhu. Now, if you just open it up and smell it. Oh, hail the dark one, the dark one will return. This little vial in the next 10 minutes can be yours along with the tampon spoon. All this again for $99.99. That's right. That's crazy, you say. That's ludicrous, you say. God, seriously, what is wrong with it, you say? That's right. $99.99. Thanks for tuning in. And now it's time for a commercial break. Salt. 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 Hey there, sports fans, and welcome to another exciting event. Today's event will dazzle, amaze, and astound you all at once. So be prepared. That's right. Today's tantamount test is the dangerous game of Magazine Meandering. Our two challengers, McGuck and Martin, will battle it out. And they're off. Look at those two titans tackle it out. My goodness, they are truly magnificent. Oh, what an incredibly bold move by Martins. He is truly a powerhouse. This is an absolute nail biter. Look at them go. They will stop at nothing to win this. They keep at it. 
a reading of ridiculous repartee and remarkability. McGurk refuses to be beat. He's not giving up. And it looks like, yes, yes, unbelievable. It's a tie. I've never seen this in the history of this event. My goodness, quite the match. These two legends have managed to tie it up and make history. This is a remarkable day in sports. And good night. We'll see you next time. And that's it for our program. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for the soap opera, The Lives of Things. There are many histories in Wakefield hidden in plain sight. Hello and welcome to History About Town. For example, this home was the house of the first mayor of Wakefield, Jedediah Rond. Jedediah. Jedediah. Jedediah Rond, who ran on the Pinecone platform. Here's where the fire of 1892 burned down the Corn Cobble Candy Factory. As many as 400 people died. Warren G. Harding wrote a speech right here. No, right here. Moonshine was a popular commodity here in Wakefield. From after the Civil War to the 60s, it was the biggest employer in town. Women voted here for the first time in 1927. The first Indian settlement was right here.
The first tree planted in Wakefield was planted here. The first middle school was here until the hurricane of 1923. There were many deaths. Here is a fine example of post-Ruskin Gothic architecture. This is where Mayor Teethunk had his son buried, the one he never talked about. John Rover was not the first settler here in Wakefield. He was also settled in the east by Fritter Wilkins. The first time electricity came to Wakefield, there was great excitement. They had a parade. This is the spot in 1951 where international movie star Ann Baxter made an appearance to promote her film Love at Tea Time. Jeepers Potter lived on this farm until Brickhouse University took over the land after he passed away. Some say he didn't want his land deeded to the university. The controversy still goes on to this day. These are the steps where young William McKinley once sat. This is a fine example of our town's history, sturdy walls. Here's where the old Jamboree picnic took place. The first occurred on July 7th, 1904. The last occurred on July 15th, 1967. It was canceled because of the fire. Over there, beyond that point, is where the disease of 1915 wiped out the cattle crop. This is where the Great Pumpkin of 1971 was grown. It won the state championship. But it was eaten by a horse. The horse died. The grower, Clark McFarlane, was disqualified. Here is the tomb to mark the unknown soldier of 1812. We never found out his name. Here's Wakefield's time capsule. Tune in next week and I will read the label.
taking your questions that you've sent in to me on the internet and then I'll be answering them. I'm not an actual doctor but have you ever had some weird symptoms or upsetting things and you don't want to go to the doctor and you don't want to listen to yourself or talk about it? I'll talk to you for them and then I'll look them up on the internet. So, let's get started, shall we? Ready, Marjorie? Okay. Our first question comes to us from Alan. Alan says, I have a dry hacking cough and shortness of breath. Internet doctor, what should I do? Alan. I have your answer. Alan, if you're a baby, it might be the croup. If you are not a baby, you might have bronchitis or lung cancer. Good luck, Alan, especially if you're a baby. Our next question comes to us from Valerie. Valerie says, I'm having some burning when I urinate. Well, Valerie, this is a family program and we're not going to talk about downstairs problems. That's your problem. That's not for the internet doctor to solve. Right, Marjorie? Now on to our next question. This question comes to us from Vincent. Vincent says, my skin is cool to the touch and I have no pulse and I'm not breathing. This is an interesting puzzle for the internet doctor. Let's check. Vincent, I'm sorry to inform you that you are in fact dead, according to the internet and the internet doctor and also Marjorie the Sparkle Pony. You should let your family and friends know that you're dead so that they can move you before they, you start to stink. friends, that's all the time that the internet doctor has today. I'm glad you tuned in and I hope you'll send more questions. And everybody, let's send some good wishes to Alan. I think he has a hard road ahead of him. Thanks. And thank you, Marjorie. Join Marjorie the Sparkle Pony and I next week on Internet Doctor, where we learn about boils.
Misty Faye. Welcome to another episode of Does My Plant Need Me? Where we ask the age-old question, or do I need my plant? Let's get down to business. What I'm talking about is the fact that man has come from plants. Plants come from man. Men and plants, women and plants, human beings and plants, we're all connected. From the moment people started walking upright, they wanted to get back. Get back to where it all began. Where you ask? Plants. Let's take a look at these beauties today. Does my plant need me? Mm, I think so. Sadly, I think this little baby, we're gonna have to let her go. But why? Why not let her die gracefully? So, I'm keeping her around. Again, when we talk about man and plants and being connected, I mean, look at these little leaves. Look at them, so tiny, small, like veins. People, look at them. Another thing you can do with your plants is uh, put eggshells right inside. Over by the kitchen sink, throw them in there. They like that, plants like that. Also a good little head scratch sometimes. Never did them wrong. Now, sometimes I get questions, and in fact I have two. Two questions today that I'm going to read to you and we're going to answer. Questions! Our first question. Misty, is my plant trying to warn me of impending doom? Well, John from San Andreas, I've got to say, minus the fault lines, yes, your plant is trying to warn you. This plant right here, clearly dying because it's cold out. It's sad. Valentine's Day is over. Birthdays have been celebrated. It should just go. So yes, this plant may be warning me of an impending doom to my relationship. Moving on. Our second question is from a local gal. Dear Misty, is it true plants respond better to an English accent? Hmm, Jill from Charlestown. Well, Jill, I'm not really sure about the British accent, but I can tell you this much. Plants do not respond well to a Boston accent. Learn to drive, you douchebag. I said I wanted a regular coffee, light, no sugar. What are you getting me? Your father's name is Sully. I bet you don't even have a date tonight. What are you going up to Route 1? Huh? Way up? North side? South side? You're going to go all the way up and turn around. I know where you're going. I know where you're going. You got quarters? This bastard right here. Not a good guy. And in fact, I yell at this plant every so often, 10 days, 10 days in a row, and yet here it is, still growing. It catches everything it touches. My shirts have fallen off. It's stripping me. This plant hates me. And you know what? I hate it back. Anyway, enough of you. We'll talk to you sometime later. Join me next week. We take the nature outside and put it in our pocket. Tiny trees that you can carry. Ooh, they want to go with you. <laughs> My little buddies, let's go. No, I'm leaving you. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's leave that one too. I'm Misty Faye, and you've been watching. Does my plant need me?
Hi, I'm Dr. Politicus. You can call me Dr. P. This is LPRP and You and Me, the show that discusses political reform through eisegesis, line scansion, and biological survey data. I founded the LPRP to encourage a fresh approach to solving what I would describe as structural problems that currently hinder our federal elections and governance in general. Elements of the LPRP platform include a return to the brass standard for financial stability, appetite safety, regulating and protecting healthy and natural appetites, renewable entropy, stop unsustainable rates of decay consumption and foster alternative forms of entropy, a war on bugs, we can all agree that bugs are bad, right? We should legalize medical pesticides. NASA, what should it do now? Lead bold nationwide push to explore and colonize shuttered big box stores. Dermaturianism, end the invisible discrimination against those who consume only skin-based foods. Jobs program, federal government should lead the states in creating jobs in growth industries like robot porn. End the war on illiteracy. We think this one speaks for itself. Today's episode of LPRP focuses on the reform of federal elections. One area that clearly needs to be addressed is the order in which states hold presidential primaries. The LPRP recommends the following reform system. Syllabic tabular primary order with avian tie breaks. Primaries are conducted in the following order, to be reversed every other election, for fairness. Overall order, fewest syllables in state name to most syllables. States with a single syllable go first, so Maine, by itself. States with the highest number of syllables, four, hold a Super Tuesday primary, together, on the last week. States with two or three
Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Join us next time when our topic will be metric analysis of the filibuster. Good night.